What's up guys, Adrian here, back with another video, let's get started. This was April 2018, so about two years ago before I got into powerlifting. Here I am at the CSU Rec Center, um, I'm lifting a 4x8 today, that's 4 sets of 8 reps at 225 pounds. Uh, this was in my first volume block of training when I was very first getting into lifting, so all of my sets were in the higher rep range, so anywhere between like 8 to 15, not really much less than that, so it's just a bunch of volume blocks. The first thing, or the main thing I guess that I want to point out, is the work capacity involved here. So this is a 4x8, so that's 32 total reps at uh, 225 pounds. Um, usually I would do this 3x10 or 4x8 because that's either 30 or 32 reps. If I'm going to go up into a higher intensity, um, I'll usually go down into a 5x5 five five or something like a 3x6 or just something with a lower uh, rep range with a much higher intensity to work on strength stuff. But as this was more of a volume block, I almost never went below like a 5x5. Five Getting into the third set here, you can see that I slow down and I get a little bit more fatigued. My reps are a little bit more bouncy off of the chest, my arms are a little bit more uneven, and the bar speed slows down a little bit. There's a couple times I take pauses, like this one here, but it doesn't slow me down overall. I feel like I can still finish all eight reps in the set, meaning it was a doable set and I could like replicate that weight um, up until the fourth set. Looking at the times on these sets here, most of them are around 30 seconds. That means my sets are pretty consistent and I'm not losing a whole bunch of uh, speed regardless of me doing a lot of volume on these days. Um, that could mean that I need to do more explosive work, but overall it just means that my endurance was nice and high. And considering that's the point of this 4x8 training, that's really what all I'm shooting for. That's why I thought I was ready to go into my max testing next, so the 1RM maxes. April 27th, 2018, this is me testing my one rep max at Prodigy Gym. I uh, decide to bounce a little bit too much with 305 and it goes up easy. I try to go heavier with a 315, figure why not. Um, I'm not going pause reps like I do now because this wasn't a powerlifting, this was bodybuilding style training. But I can't quite hit the 315, I get stuck right in the middle. So back to the gym again, I had some pretty good idea of where my numbers were in terms of strength, but I still wanted to get that three plate touch and go, so back to volume training. Um, I wanted to hit three sets of 10 here at 225. Um, it was just a little bit more comfortable. That was the first set rep scheme that I ever learned on any lift, so back to basics. It's same as going to like a 5x5 five five or a 531 or whatever program that you like. It was just nice and cozy. Um, I really like the hypertrophic effects here, so just gaining size and mass and consistently getting larger with this lift. So this attempt on a 315 touch and go came on August 25th, 2018. Over summer, I worked through a whole full body workout routine emphasizing my chest. Um, I wanted to hit this just because I was comfortably getting stronger on bench, but as you can see, I'm going to get drive, stuck drive, here drive, right drive, in the middle. Drive. I'm not using that leg drive, not using an arch, didn't pause very well. It was not a very good lift. October 3rd, 2018, 315 touch and go. Um, not using any leg drive, not using any pause, but the lift is there. It's such a grinder. Uh, that mid-range after I'm decelerating off the chest is a really big deal, so I'm still weakest off the chest, but I managed to push through. This video here is in June, but winter and spring especially, I got into competitive powerlifting style bench. So that's a complete pause at 275. This is August 11th, closer to my September meet to elevate for the powerlifting competition. 295 for an attempted double. My touch and go strength transfers a lot to my pause, but still leaves a little something to be desired. This is August 20th, 2019, so about nine days after the last clip. Training bench two to three times a week has really been making it jump rather quickly. Um, you'll see I can hit both reps at my 295, even though I wasn't able to nine days prior, so that's a pretty good win for me. I'm gonna rate the RPE 
be at around nine and a half, maybe ten. If it was a little slower, I'd give it a ten, but definitely nine and a half. It was a grinder for sure. So September 1st, 2019, my first competition at Elevate Barbell. Bench attempt number three. Number one was 275, nailed it. Two was 286, nailed it. This is 296. I miss it on the lockout. This is in November 2019 after my competition. There are no events coming up. There's nothing to prep for, just some fun in the gym. Uh, we're playing around on some bench, you know, keeping guard up like in jujitsu, just trying to hold on and stay balanced. It's a lot of fun. You'll see this once I unrack, but I put my stuff on, my equipment, my wraps, my sleeves, a uh, belt, I'm trying to hit 315 for a pause rep. Uh, you'll see that third plate when it swings loose to the rack, but um, not using heavy weights for a while makes it next to impossible to move, so it doesn't budge. And here we are, caught up in 2020, February 6th. Uh, this is me being back on a volume block after competition, just trying to get back in the swing of things, increase that work capacity, get some momentum back. This is me moving 250 pounds for 5x5. Five five. That's something that I haven't touched in a while. I haven't actually moved that much in a volume set before. So that is a volume PR. What's interesting about this too is I'm finally consistently pausing my reps and using a little bit of leg drive here so I actually look like a power lifter. The following week on February 18th, we're moving up a little bit in weight. We're getting a little bit closer to competition, so the intensity's got to go up. This is 275 for a triple. Got my wraps, got my belt, got my leg drive, got my paws. Everything is lining itself up. Something that's a little funny about this too is I had to go through three spotters before I found one who wouldn't touch the bar if I slowed down off my chest. Power lifter be struggling. Something that cannot be understated too is being in the right gym and the right environment and having a good spotter is everything. One of the reasons why I do prefer working out in a home gym is just because I know exactly who's going to be holding the bar and they're going to know me a lot better than some rando at the gym. So the guy spotting me right now is Evan. He spots me regularly. We train at least once a week with each other. He knows my cues pretty well and he knows how I train so he knows not to take the bar. I love the speed on this one. I felt a lot more explosive. I wasn't using the belt here, but I was being a lot more intentional with just how smooth the reps felt. I probably could have done a fourth one if I really wanted it, but I'm just trying to rest after, because that was a heavy day. It looked great. That was heavy. Adrian, again, thank you so much for watching my second video on the bench press, okay? We've got one more in this series coming out that's going to be the deadlift. After that, we might start a new series probably on technique. Um, that's going to take a little bit, though, because we still have the competition coming up next Saturday after I post this video, so it'll still be a little bit before I can work on those. Um, we do have some more content coming with me and a couple other guys, so we're going to have to film, do the workouts, do the editing, do the posting, all that sorts of stuff, so it'll be a while, but good stuff is on the way, so stay tuned.